Hi, my name is Rubedium. In early Hollywood and the history of cinema, they didn't have fluid head tripods and they had very large cameras. The way that early cinematographers and camera operators used cameras was with a tripod head called a geared head. This had two little wheels, one that did pan and one that did tilt. And you were able by a combination of these wheels to make the camera do what you want it to do. It is a very counterintuitive way of using a camera. Um, very different to having a camera on your shoulder where you just move it where you want to go or on a fluid head tripod where you just point it where you want it to go. A geared head is much more mechanical. It's much less human. It feels to me like the wheels of fate grinding to their inevitable conclusion. This kind of tripod head lends itself to the kind of style of David Fincher movies or any story where you don't want the added presence of an operator in the camera. You want the camera to be objective, impartial, and absolute. People still use these geared heads a lot, but there are a couple of limiting factors. One, they're very, very expensive to buy. The Ari head, which is the industry standard, goes for around $20,000. The Ari head 2, which has electronics in it to track the motion of the camera, is almost double that. And operating a gear head is a little bit of a lost art. Um, it's something that only people who have spent time on set or being trained by other cinematographers really have a good uh, grasp of. If you look on the internet, uh, you'll see some amazing videos of people making using a gear head to follow very complicated patterns flawlessly and quickly. I set out to learn how difficult it would be to learn this skill from scratch. Um, it's very counterintuitive and the only times that I'd seen one on set, I'd played with it and, and had been unable to make it do anything that I wanted. So I set myself the goal of working out how long it would take me to do a reasonably complicated shot with a geared head tripod. The first problem I ran into was that it takes a certain number of hours to get good at a geared head and the rental of a geared head, the high-end ones, is very high. Luckily, I was able to get my hands on this. This is a Chinese-made geared head which has a lot of play and give in it and I certainly wouldn't put my camera on it. It just isn't very mechanically sound. It doesn't have the very fine tolerances that a proper geared head has to make it so precise, but it is really great for learning with because it follows the same structure as a, a industry standard gear head. The direction of the wheels is the same and the feel should give me something appropriating um, the Ari head. What I'm gonna do is set myself challenges and work out how long it takes me to kind of get up to speed with this. So here goes. first thing I did was mount a laser pointer to the top of the geared head and tape a square to the wall about five feet away and try and trace the square with the laser pointer. This was pretty infuriating to start with, uh, but after about an hour um, over a couple of days, you know, timing myself each day, just keeping it to 20 minutes, I was more or less able to follow the path as the laser pointer went around. The main thing I noticed was that if I could reach a level of proficiency in 20 minutes the first day, I would sit down the second day and it felt like I was starting from scratch, but then it only took me about 10 minutes to get up to that same level, so on and so on. So the next day took me five limits and then after three or four days, I was moving pretty quickly and able to keep the laser pointer right in the line. After I had mastered the square, I moved on to an infinity symbol, which means that I had to move diagonally um, this was felt like I was starting from scratch again and I really couldn't get the laser pointer or the head to do what I wanted. But again, over time, um, things got quicker and I was able to make sense of it faster each day. At around the two hour mark in total time practiced, I could get pretty slowly and then increasingly faster around the infinity symbol. So I decided to move on to a tracking exercise that I designed. I set up my motorized slider to pan back and forth on the track and I put the center of the laser pointer on the center of the slider and I followed it back and forth along the track. I was able to get pretty good at anticipating when it would stop and keeping it dead center. 
I then put my camera on and used the screen to keep the crosshairs in the same position. I was happy with the footage I was getting, um, so I put a little bit more time in and I'm getting just over three hours now to get a pretty decent shot with the cheaper geared head. So now I'm about three and a half hours in on my geared head journey and I felt it was finally time to get myself a real geared head and put a camera on it and try and put some shots together. I found this mini Worrell on ShareGrid for $75 a day. I got it over the weekend. I was able to um, play with it for probably another hour um, on Saturday, even without the um, camera on, just with the laser pointer on, getting up to speed and Wow, the difference between this and the no-name um, Chinese-made one is light years. It's absolutely a totally different beast. The wheels in themselves have a lot of weight to them. They probably weigh, you know, three or four pounds each. And so there's inertia there that you have to compensate for. But the head itself is just so smooth, so well-made, um, really high capacity. I had no hesitation about putting it, um, putting my big camera on it. And all in all, a lot of my, I would say, 80-90% of my kind of, you know, geared head awareness was able to transfer over to the Worrell from the, um, the no-name one. The big advantage of the Worrell is that it has, it actually has gears. It has first, second, and third gear. So if you're doing a quick tripod move, you're able to set the third gear and the um, one spin of the wheel makes the um, camera pan really quickly or um, tilt really quickly. But then if you're doing intricate work, you can turn it down to the first or second gear and get much more, uh, much more fine control. So after another 50 minutes of familiarizing myself um, and transporting my skills over to the new tripod head, I put the camera on and finally went for a shot. I was thinking I would do something very complex like handoffs and things, but really what I wanted to just get one take down and master it was um, someone walking into frame, sitting down, standing up and walking out. So there was no diagonal um, in this shot. It was basically just a, a first awareness of which wheel moves which axis and able to anticipate the movement of the actor and get a shot that I as a director would have been happy with. I tried three different takes um, with this. The first one was absolutely crazy. The wheels were going every which way. Um, I wasn't able to anticipate, I wasn't able to predict, but uh, the second take was much better, maybe even usable. And then the third take, uh, I was really, really happy with. With the geared head, it really isn't a case of conscious awareness. You just have to have a, develop a sixth sense for which way the gears and the wheels move the camera. And it just takes time. So at four and a half hours total, um, with different geared heads, I was able to pull off this shot um, okay on the second time and really solidly on the third take. If you're a professional camera operator who lists geared head as one of their abilities, you have to do this first time every time. Um, there isn't like a warm up take. Uh, there, I guess there probably would be a rehearsal for camera, um, but you have to really be on it. I would say the four and a half hours or just just over um, four hours and 45 minutes that I spent from start to finish on the geared head, let me get a pretty good shot um, the second or and third time going. So I would say if I spent that again, if I spent another four hours, I'd be you know really up to speed and probably feel good about charging myself uh, out as a geared head operator. It's not one of my ambitions. I just really wanted to test what the learning curve is like. And I have to say, breaking it up into like an hour, a couple hours each day over time with your own equipment, um, you'll get there very, very quickly. The closest thing that I can equate it to is parallel parking. If you don't know what you're doing, or you're uncertain about your own skills, you know, you, you then get an extra level of stress and when people are watching you, um, pressure, and then your performance goes out the window. But if you know what you're doing, you practice it enough, um, it actually doesn't take that long to, to develop an awareness for the factors involved. And you could, you know, even under pressure, do something pretty quickly um, and be able to maintain that skill over a long period of time. That was my look at learning the geared camera head. Um, hopefully you got something out of it. I really did. Uh, I'll definitely continue to uh, practice with these kind of things because I really like the movement that it gives. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.